SEO, what we know and what split testing has shown us. At this point, you should have a pretty good idea of how to go about using split tests in an effective manner in order to understand what works and what doesn't. But this might lead you to another interesting question. What has split testing already taught us? Can you simply follow the advice from other people's split testing? Well, yes and no. This video will explain more. Results from previous split tests. The great thing about the SEO community is that on the whole, everyone is happy to help everyone else with free advice and information. This is one of the things that makes split testing so valuable. When a company takes the effort to run tests on hundreds of their pages, they can obtain some useful information that can be used by the entire internet marketing industry until Google changes its algorithms. Split tests are already being used right now, and they can tell us some really interesting things about effective SEO that may come as a surprise. One such discovery shared on MOZ, a blog about internet marketing, was that using keywords with high search volumes doesn't always result in better performance. Will Critchlow tried inserting more popular key phrases into the meta tags and content of existing pages and found that in many cases those pages saw a drop in organic traffic of as much as 20%. Why? One possible explanation is that these terms, while popular for search, hurt the CTR of those pages in the SCRPs. Another possibility is that this had to do with Google's rank brain algorithm, its attempt to understanding meaning more than explicit keywords. Whatever the case, if a page is performing well with a less popular keyword, you should probably leave it as it is. This actually perfectly underscores some points we've discussed previously in this training. For one, the multivariable nature of SEO and Google's algorithms means that while recommendation might sound good on paper, it doesn't always translate in the real world, especially now that Google pays close attention to signals from users, such as bounce rate and CTR. It also shows us how using not just one, but multiple types of split tests can help yield better results. The research conducted here was done using a typical matched pages method, but if they had also used a redirect, they might have been able to see if the bounce rates and CTRs were what was responsible or if something else was at play. Hopefully, the information you have gained from this training will help you in ways such as this to get a real edge over your competition. Another discovery yielded by split testing is that around 30 to 40% of all changes recommended by SEO audits actually often make zero difference. Once again, this shows us that what works in theory or on paper doesn't necessarily hold up in the real world and it shows us the value once more of conducting real split tests. If you run an SEO agency and you conduct an audit, then tell the company to make huge, fiddly changes across the board. And if those changes don't yield any results, this can really hurt that company's trust in you and likelihood of ordering again. So admit ignorance and test things in a smaller way before you announce the huge changes that you think the company should make. Finally, the results from this particular effort also showed that what works for one site doesn't necessarily work for another. This could be impacted by everything from industry to competition to writing style. But it also means that running a split test once and forgetting all about it may not be enough. You need to test your strategy every time before you roll it out across the board.